Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk about Black History Month. The month that is a celebration of my people. Because I am a black man and everything. And it's about all our accomplishments, um, all the oppression that we have gone through over like centuries um, of living in like America and stuff like that. And even till this day, we are still being oppressed. And so I'm here today to talk to you about certain characters or TV shows or episodes that revolve around Black History Month that I personally enjoy. So I'm here today to talk to you about Power Rangers Dino Thunder, Tootin Hawking's Curse. I love Dino Thunder. I mean, who doesn't love a good dino season, you know? And this was the second ever like Disney Power Rangers series and it's the second one to be filmed in New Zealand. Although I guess you can kind of consider Wild Force a little bit of the Disney one too. So I guess you can call this like two and a half, why not? And so like yeah like Dino Thunder was just like a really good season. It was like piggybacking off of the um Ninja Storm which okay I did say it took five years for there to be another Black Red Ranger. I don't know if Shane was black or not. After reading online, it says Samoan. He might be mixed with black. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I just don't really know. I know for sure he's Samoan. Of course, Samoan is not black, but he might be mixed with black, similar to that of The Rock. Um, I can't find no indication if he's black. One actress told me he is. But it clearly says online Samoan, so I don't know. So I won't do a video on that for Black History Month. Also, I don't know, even if he is, I don't know if I'll do one or not. Because, like, I, I do feel bad he passed away due to suicide. However, I just read this article about him. Like, something that came to light that's very, very, very disturbing. That happened two years and stuff. Per, um, that probably caused him to like commit suicide so it's kind of like I really don't want to have to touch on that you know what I'm saying so I'm just going to leave that alone and, and it's, it's very 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 disturbing like very just look it up for yourself I, I don't even want to talk about it anyway so yes yeah, Dino Thunder this is an Ethan episode. It's hard to find an Ethan episode. There's only three, and they're not very good. Um, <laughs> well, kind of like four, kind of, but one really doesn't count. Um, it's really hard to. It's, it's really hard to find. It's weird when it comes to black people playing Power Rangers. Them and the Yellow Rangers, except for this Yellow Ranger in this series, it's hard to find any episodes that focus on them. Or any episodes that make them look like a really like true like hero and stuff. Like it's really hard. Like ever since like Zach, to be honest, like it's hard to find like a center focus episode on like a black person playing a Power Ranger that's like very heroic. Normally if it is, they have to share it with somebody else. It's very odd and very weird. It's almost like the casting directors picked them for the specific roles that don't have that much to do. Them and Yellow Rangers, no matter if the Yellow Rangers is female or male, they barely have anything to do as well. However, the Yellow Ranger in this series has like a lot to do. Probably because she was the love interest of like the White Ranger and she was the only female Power Ranger. So this season was really unique because it started off with three rangers, similar like the other one, red, blue, and yellow. And then the fourth ranger, which was the black ranger, which was Tommy, he was kind of like the additional ranger, which was unique because the fourth ranger has never been additional. And then when they got Trent as the white ranger, he was the fifth ranger and he was the additional ranger, which a fifth ranger has never been that. So that was quite unique all on its own. And of course, the return of Tommy being a professor. And, and it was just like a, a, a really good season. The only problem is that when Disney took over, things started getting comedic again. 
So the whole like casting and Devin thing, they was like comedic relief in the show. And I don't like comedic relief at all. They were kind of like um, Bulk and Skull type characters, but um, they didn't try to act exactly like Bulk and Skull, so that was good. And they didn't have that um, imitation Bulk and Skull music like the Nickelodeon um, era had, you know, so that was kind of good. Like they're annoying, but they're not like super annoying. Not like in um, Ninja still. Lord have mercy those two. I feel bad for those actors. <laughs> People really hate those two. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for them. Anyway, so in this part, this is like much later in the season. Trent is now good. Cassie and Ethan are actually dating. Their relationship is weird. Cause like she's like the stuck up bully type girl and he's like the super nerd play video games type dude. And so you'll never think those two would be a couple, but then once they did like the whole online dating thing and met each other, they were like disgusted, but they wanted to make it work. So that was kind of cool and I was really rooting for them until something strange happened. Even though they're dating, like they start dating, but you never see them date, like never. You never see, you never see them hang out or anything like that. But in this episode, he reprimands her and stuff. And then a couple episodes after this, they break up and she starts dating Devin, her um, best friend. Now, technically her and Devin should have been together from the start, but they never were. I mean, it made more sense for them to be together than Ethan and her, but I was just rooting for her and Ethan, you know? So that kind of sucks that they broke up and everything, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> but um, it's funny because the actress who plays Cassie, she played um, the hench girl in the season prior and she had brown hair in that because she naturally has brown hair. And so when this role came up, they was looking for a character that acts just like her and she's all kind of like, well, you're looking for somebody who's like me, might as well cast me and stuff. I think she still had to like audition or something like that and then dye her hair. And it was funny because like, um, she like acted completely different from like the last season from Maya she played. I think it was Maya, wasn't it? It was Capri and somebody. It was the other one. And so, um, and she played like a teenage girl in high school of all that. I don't know how old she was at that time, but it was just like weird. And it was weird seeing her blonde hair. She looks completely different and stuff. Um, but anyway, this episode, it was hard to pick one. Cause like I said, there's only like really three episodes. There's one where he's playing a video game and he gets sucked into the video game. It's a very comedic, dumb episode. And then a couple of other people get um, sucked into it. And then there's, and they also have like a, a wizard troll type thing in there. And then so like there's another episode um, where he gets bullied and picked on. So I wasn't going to pick that. And then there's one where he gets a hovercraft cycle and he's cursed. Well, yeah, guess what one I'm talking about? The hovercraft cycle. <laughs> I decided to talk about this one because... This is the second hovercraft motorcycle to be created. The first one was a ninja steel. The second one is this one. And then the third is an all the way in operation overdrive. And so it made sense for the one in ninja steel to be given to the crimson ranger. He was red. However, what was really interesting, they decided to give it to the blue ranger in this. And it's not a Sentai thing. It's an American thing. And so then they did it again, Operation Overdrive with the Black Ranger who happened to be a black guy. And so I thought that was like really neat. And so like, okay. So in this episode, basically, um, like I said before, Trent is good and he had that clone White Ranger thing. And so like Ethan and the rest of the class, they're like on like a field trip type thing to a museum. Now, Tommy, who is now called Dr. O, he is morphed and stuck in his morph sequence. I forgot why Jason David Franks um, couldn't demorph. I think he was busy doing something else, probably. I don't know. So, who knows? I have to relook that back up. But yeah, he's just stuck in his ranger form. 
<laughs> and I just remember that was just being weird and stuff. It's also also weird that he didn't get to wear his costume. He could have at least wore it and stood around and talked. But, you know, they always get like the stunt doubles and their body shapes are completely different. And, well, in a way, he's there and it's like the Egyptian museum and he sees these hieroglyphics. So he writes them down and he wants to crack them because he's like super geeky nerdy. You know, it's interesting. This is the first ranger who's like, he's he's not a techno nerd geek type person. He doesn't like build nothing. He doesn't create stuff like Billy. Uh, he doesn't even hack into stuff. He mostly just um, plays on the internet and plays video games. That's just like his thing. That's all he does. <laughs> and he's like such a geek. And it's interesting because the Red Ranger and Beast Morphus, he was the same way, but he was the leader and did a whole lot of bravery type stuff. So Ethan is like a nice guy. He's a really nice guy, always cheerful. Um, since becoming a Power Ranger, he's brave, but he doesn't like doing a lot of like stuff that like you know might be too dangerous. But you know, and he also wields the um, Triceratops Zord. And so when he took the um, Dino Gem, it infused him with the power of the Triceratops that gives him kind of like this. Um, they have like extra powers in this. So he like smashes his forearms together. They like light up blue and have kind of like these scales on it. And now his arms only are super strong. But he can just like ram into stuff. And so like he's busy trying to decipher like the hieroglyphics. Because you know this is what he wants to do. And then he reads that oh if you read this you get a curse on you. <laughs> so he doesn't believe it until bad stuff starts to happen and bad stuff is constantly happening to him in this episode and like you know a car passes by and water and mud that happened to me once man I remember I was pissed <laughs> and stuff <laughs> all that water just like splashed on me and stuff so anyways um Mezagog is like, you know, the main villain who's Trent's father. And, you know, I've always wondered when it came to Trent and his dad, they had to be like, he had to adopt him or stepfather or something. I never understood how they're related because they're two different races. Similar to that of Dino Fury, the Blue Ranger. How is that lady his mom? She's either Black, um, Maori or, um, oh, what's the other thing? Similar to Asian, um, uh, Something start with a P, not Pacific Islander, but um, ooh, I just had it in my head. Uh, it starts with pair or something, um, Polynesian or something like that. Um, so she's mixed with one of like those and stuff. So I don't understand how she's really related, unless it's the whole Polynesian thing. Um, that's the closest thing I can think of to Asian and other than Asian in New Zealand. New Zealand is a very like mixed country like they have a little bit of everything in there and it's so hard because i'm the outsider trying to look in trying to figure out what stuff is especially when it comes to the nickelodeon seasons of power rangers because they had a lot of new zealand uh actors and stuff they started filming over there it's so hard to figure out when you don't live over there and learn their ways you know but um in a way so he's um had all this bad luck well um, when he read, like, I guess, like, the hieroglyphics, it woke up the uh, uh, Egyptian, uh, um, Egyptian monster type thing called Tutan Hawkins. What kind of name is that? <laughs> and so he sees Cassidy and he just, for some reason, just wants to make her, like, his queen. So he's all like, you know, I'll give you this and I'll give you that. And she's intrigued. So, like, uh, at first she's scared and everything. They know what monsters are, her and Devin. But she decides, okay, you will make me a queen. Or I'll be a queen and everything. So he dresses them both up in Egyptian clothes. And she has an Egyptian wig. And, uh, you'll never see nothing like that today. A white person wearing something like that. That'd be, like, too offensive. <laughs> and so, because of that, she's treating everybody like a servant and stuff. And that would cause Ethan to get, like, upset with her. Which is weird. They're, like, going out. But you never see them going out. And so, like... Um, the monster dude, he fights the Power Rangers at one point, and so he's constantly fighting them on and off. Now, one thing I loved about this season is that they morphed constantly. They morphed at least 
four or five different times in this one episode, which is nuts because the Nickelodeon ones they barely morph and everything, and they like and they like, rarely do it individually. So if they can do it over and over in this season, why can't they do it in Nickelodeon stuff? So anyway, um, after fighting a couple of times, like. Ethan's at the point where he's just like, ah, oh, man, I can't do nothing because I keep screwing stuff up. So Kira goes back to the museum to get some more hieroglyphics. He's there, um, and she morphs, and she fights him. You know one thing I gotta say? The clothes in this season, boy, I love the clothes. Those were some nice clothes in the early 2000 times. So anyway, um, I think this came out like in 2002 or three. Cause I was like a sophomore in college or something. So, um, she gets some more hieroglyphics and he's trying to crack it. Cause he wants to like, you know, um, break his curse. Well, and for some reason, Haley is building a motorcycle. Cause Haley is like the tech person. I miss Haley. I wish they would bring her back. I think her real name is Ismay or something like that. Um, she was originally supposed to be the first LGBT person in Power Rangers, but they got like cold feet and now we have the green female ranger who is and so um he deciphers the code and it says that in order to defeat like this monster it has to be defeated in the air to break the curse so his Zord doesn't like fly so he's just wondering how he's going to do it but in a way Haley has done making her motorcycle and um, it's blue because it's for Ethan. Why she decided to make him an extra motorcycle, who knows? Because they already have motorcycles. Like the red, blue, and yellow ranger have like dino um, motorcycles. And the black and white one have ATVs. So there's no reason why she made him and him only a motorcycle. It's never been explained. It would have been nice if they would have explained it. So they're all like, well, can it fly? Because they need it to fly for him to defeat that thing. So she's like, nope. So she works on it again. He said he's going to help her, but he doesn't know how to do mechanical stuff. He's no Billy. <laughs> and so, like, um, the monster is back. He tells Cassie he wants to, like, defeat the ranger. She's all like, you know, she ain't down with that. And she leaves him. He gets mad. He starts wrecking havoc on the city. Mezagod sends Elsa to like help him like defeat the Rangers. I love Elsa. I love the actress who plays her. I love her magical like blasting effect with her sword. And so the Rangers they morph. Um, Tommy, I don't think Tommy shows up to fight. Not sure why. He can still fight and stuff. So like Trent, he has like a vendetta against Elsa because she works for his dad. And so they fight it out. And then, like, the other two rangers, they fight. And I think they call on their super dino mode, which I really love seeing. But, however, they're no match for this dude. And as they finna get their butts kicked some more, in comes Ethan, blasting away on his motorcycle. And it turns into the hovercraft cycle. And I really enjoy the way it looks. However, I think the black ranger one was way better um, in Operation Overdrive. So, with a whole bunch of big explosions, um, he eventually defeats the um, little Egyptian monster dude. I love those big explosions in the Disney season. People hate them. I love them. I mean, come on. You're Power Rangers. You have magical powers. You need big explosions, man. I wish they would bring that back. But, of course, he turns big and everything. So they decided they're gonna defeat him in the um with the triacid power. I love the triacid power, man. It, I think it's a Sentai thing. I don't know what exactly I assumed at first it was like a balizer. Um if it's not Sentai, then uh, I don't know, man. It looked like a balizer. But then he was later given the battle lies of the Red Ranger. So by knowing in Disney era with SPD and stuff, and in this one, they gave like two battle lies. It has like two modes. So this is like the first mode, and then it has more of the armor mode. But they're both good, great. And so they call on the, I forgot the name of that Zord. It's like this big 
Triceratops looking thing, but red. And so they defeated very easily. Um, Trent and Elsa are still fighting. I think he defeats her, stuff like that. And so now that the curse has been broken, he is like, you know, in that little, um, little hangout spot that they all hang out with. And Cassie comes to him and she does something she's never done which was really hard for her she apologized and stuff for being like a butthead to him and so they're all good and they're still dating until a couple episodes and they break up <laughs> and so like even though ethan isn't well technically he is the strongest like he's yeah, it's weird like he's brave and he's strong but at times he's not and it's kind of like when it comes to like geeks and like nerds and stuff like that they are not the bravest people so it was cool that his powers gave him the extra strength that he needed to give him confidence like in real life and eventually he does have like confidence even though he plays like video games constantly and stuff but it's just always fun to see him like light up in the excitement talking about video games and stuff like he's no zach he's no aisha um you know he's no like tanya nothing like that but we you know when push comes to shove and like you need his help he's there for you you know happy black history month everybody i'll talk to you later bye